one moment while I sync the other camera. Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I B. DeGange doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Literally setting up as we go. Tsunami happening in Japan. Not good, friends. I've got fact cam going here. Um, you guys will be able to see everything, uh, hopefully, behind me here. Thank you. Uh, Christelle, my behind-the-scenes queen, is unfortunately at work. Uh, we have major news, in which case we had to go live. For those of you who do not know, there is tsunami happening in Japan right now. Major, major, major bad. Um, friends, if you don't know what why that matters so much, uh, let me be the one to grimly tell you. Um, <clears throat> tsunami has wreaked havoc on Japan already. What it has done to Fukushima, it has caused cancer rates to literally skyrocket. What we are seeing in Fukushima is unlike anything that we have seen. We don't even have the science at this time to properly address just what the problem is or how to clean it up. We don't even know where all of the spent fuel is. And this is becoming an even bigger problem now that we're looking at massive tsunami here in Fukushima as we go live. Uh, we don't know how big it's going to be. It was six miles <coughs> into the ocean, which is relatively shallow. And the reason that that matters so much is because when it's more shallow, it's much more apt to produce tidal waves and tsunami, which could wreak substantial havoc on the entire area. So this, uh, this matters an awful lot, friends. We got fact cam back here. That's for you guys on the higher def cam. You guys right here, we're going to go ahead and uh, you're, are we going to screen share quite often. I'm also doing this. I am putting the, uh, the tsunami news up. Let's go ahead and listen to just a piece of it real quick as they talk here. Let's see what it is that's happening. Uh, friends, this is, this is bad news. If that, that cooling unit goes, and uh, so far they've had trouble with it. They've had the cooling unit shut down, and they're not really sure why. They think um, it could have been triggered when the earthquake happened. But there are a lot of mysteries that a lot of us are not comfortable with. Uh, we know that TEPCO has lied to us in the past. Patriotism inspires passion. We can suspect that they would lie to us again. So those of you that can do your own research, do so. Who should you trust? Uh, if I give you anything, it's definitely going to be true. Um, if you want absolute facts from doctors, I suggest uh, watch uh, the coming days, what comes up from Helen Caldicott, Lauren Murray, um David Blanche, Artie Gunderson, and uh, specifically Chris Busby. Um, I would watch all of them. Friends, uh, here is what we're looking at from Japan right now. They don't have the translator on at this time. We're going to leave that live and we're going to go ahead to the news of it. But again, um, I'm leaving that open on the side there, going screen share. And uh, we're going to keep an eye on this. Perhaps when I'm off air with this show and I'm done with the broadcast, I may leave the live stream from Fox up. Um, make sure you donate because I probably won't be able to monetize this video after I do it, but I'm going to do it for you guys anyway. It's to correct views of hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. Um, again, uh, live feed there. At, uh, and again, this is uh, a general mountain time. At 19, uh, two more offshore aftershocks measuring 4.9 and 4.6 were seen. Uh, this was after a 7.3 earthquake struck off Japan's Fukushima prefecture, triggering a potentially deadly ti uh, tsunami tidal wave for those of you in America, which authorities warn could be higher than 3 meters if it reaches the shore. That's about 10 feet, friends. 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, at 13, some three hours after the powerful earthquake, a 1.4 high meter tsunami was observed uh, in Sende Miyagi Prefecture at 8.03. At uh, 02, TEPCO, in a news update, said that Fukushima power plant remains intact. Again, this is from RT, friends, just joining in. And safe after operator confirmed the restarting of nuclear 3 spent fuel pool at 7.49. At 6.38 a.m., the Fukushima Daiichi and Dangi plants experienced the one meter high tsunami wave, the company said, adding that the second wave was not very high. Uh, I wonder what they're hiding about the first wave, if anything. We know that they have lied to us before. Uh, 2345 General, Mountain, General Means Time, Tokyo Electric Power Company confirmed that the cooling system in Reactor 3 spent fuel pools stopped working but restarted 90 minutes after shutdown. No cooling leaks or any other abnormalities were reported. Um, Japan's Meteorological Agency updated information about the earthquake, revising the magnitude up to 7.4 on the Richter scale on the previous 7.3. The depth was also raised uh, to 25 kilometers. Now the reason that that matters is uh, you might think, oh, well, a 7.4 or a 7.3, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. This is done on a scientific principle known as orders of magnitude. That means that a point three is ten times worse than a 7.4. Not the one percent that you're thinking. A 7.1 and a 7.2. A 7.2 is ten times worse. That's the way that works. It's not the fractional math that you're thinking when you look at it. Um, 2319, uh, tsunami warning is also in place from Yagi Prefecture. Uh, and you can scroll down and see um, all the way up to, uh, to where we are now, of course. At 2250, Tokyo Electric Power Company told National Broadcaster NHK that the cooling system in reactors spent three fuel pool had stopped working. Japan's National Nuclear Agency has confirmed that the temperature rise in the pool is gradual. Now, friends, do you know what that means, gradual? It means that it is slowly but surely coming up. There are reactions happening within the corium, which is the melted fuel that is, of course, causing havoc and cancer risks and everything else all through the area. That is what that means. We're already seeing a warming here. Um, what, what were we warned about for so long? We were told, do not build these things here. This was told by doctors and scientists and geologists the world over that this was the kind of thing that we were going to see. And they predicted that it would happen around uh, 08 or 09. What that? Were they mystics? Were they clairvoyants and psychics? No, they were scientists <coughs> from many fields that all agreed that this could happen and warned of it, right? It happened in, in 2011. Geologically speaking, when you predict 08, 09, and you hit it by uh, 2011, that's still the outer ring of the bullseye, friends. They were warned, and they did this anyway. We're going to see if they've gone back to English for a moment here. Yes. The uh, tsunami warnings have been issued. Yes, on the right hand side. So you're all fine about the Miyagi Kesenjo Port. So you are not seeing the. Alright, so they've still got some of the evacuation warning in place there. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and read the entire, um, the entire text of this RT article here. I am going to go over the main parts and going to continue to scroll down, scroll down so that those of you on watching on FactCam <coughs> can see it as well as uh, those of you I'm going to screen share on the Media Speaks. That's why you got to subscribe to both the Media Speaks and YouTube, friends. Um, there's all the uh, Japan's Meteorological Agency updated the information about the earthquake, revising it once again. I get, this is this is a nightmare, friends. This is. This is bad because you could be looking at um, you could be looking at huge problems with 
our very existence due to something like this. This is the kind of thing that could devastate the entire northern hemisphere. This isn't something that might be a problem. If there's some kind of a meltdown here, this is going to be a problem. What have we seen so far? We've seen meltdowns, meltouts, and meltthroughs. What is that? A meltdown is when, uh, let's say that this bumper sticker here is, uh, this is the, <clears throat> the base of the reactor. You can get this bumper sticker, by the way, from the correct views of Hotmail.com. Now, if the melted fuel, which are these scissors, gets hot enough, it will melt through and down. Now you might say, why does that matter? Well, because down here where my running ring is, once you get down that far, you have now hit the water table. When you've hit the water table, the radioactivity gets into the entire water supply and causes things like bone cancer, look up strontium, causes, causes things like thyroid cancer, look up cesium. I like to tell the story um, I'm a uh, heavy metal fan, among many other styles of music, and I've noticed that the bands like to call themselves the scariest names when they're in the death metal. You got Obituary, and you got uh, you know, all these these bands with dreadful names. Cancer, cesium. Why is that? Because cesium is a very very frightening element. Cesium, cesium, for those of you that don't know, is an industrial band. But in any event, look them up. It, 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 it is it, to, inc to include that vibe that they're looking for. They pick the, the darkest element they can find. Cesium. Well, this isn't a death metal CD, friends. This isn't an electronic dance CD. This is real life. And this is it going right into your water supply. You can also see a, a melt out, which we have seen. Now, to use the other analogy, with the bumper sticker that you can get at the correct views at Hotmail.com, um, the fuel is in here, and if there is some kind of an explosion due to um, in a gas being unable to escape, or a few other things, then it will explode upwards. And here's the little chimney stack. It'll actually come out of it, like we saw look up explosion Fukushima. If that happens, it tends to fall down, and that's what the black goo, the muck, that was all over Japan. That is exactly what that was. The first time this happened, in 2011. So we've got the live feed here. Let's see if she's saying anything else important. And then we're going to zip right back into some more news. We actually have an anti-nuke candidate who has done very well in... Um, in Japan. Let's see what they're saying here, and then we'll be going right back into uh, more of the uh, commentary of the show. Alright, they're still speaking in Japan, so nothing significant has happened yet beyond what we've already talked about. Again, I've got viewers coming in right and left. Welcome aboard. Uh, we've seen uh, a problem with the cooling unit at Fukushima that could be devastating. We've seen small tidal waves uh, around three feet, ten, uh, three feet. We don't know how big they're going to be yet. We are seeing some retractions and tsunami. Uh, they're starting to uh, alleviate some of the warnings there. Uh, they don't just have a uh, tsunami warning and a go home warning. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, they do uh, oftentimes. They say that there's a tsunami watch which means there could be more coming, they're not sure. So thankfully, it looks like it may be getting better. Let me see what this guy is saying. The Arizona Cardinals, big loss yet. All right, so talking about the Arizona Cardinals, I guess we have a moment to go over this. Um, the Guardian, a Japanese anti-nuclear candidate wins election at site of world's biggest atomic power station. Now, I'm going to butcher the poor man's name, but uh, this hero, y Ryuchi Yon Yonayama, uh, it was a newly elected governor of Niigata, says he will not restart Ka uh, Kashiwazaki Kawairwa power plant. It's a station that was shut down after Fukushima. Now, this is prior to the, the, the disaster that we've seen today. This is dated back in October. 
and I wanted to get to it and was not able to. Let's look at how correct this man was. Let's look at how correct all of us were. It's time for us to quit pretending that global warming is real and spend a little bit more time worrying about what is real, which is the problem that we are seeing from all of these nuclear power plants that have outlived their expiration date to begin with and should have never been started even prior to that. An anti-nuclear candidate has been elected in the region of Japan that houses in the world's biggest atomic power station, striking a blow to Tokyo Electric Power. That's GE whose great idea to do this. Never invest in GE. Pull your money out of any stocks or mutual funds that has GE or TEPCO in it. And they've been pushing to restart the plant even after Fukushima. Well, this hero here, Mr. Yunyama, a doctor and a lawyer. I notice how doctors are always against nuclear power plants. Maybe that's because they know something about health, heart disease, and cancer, and bones. He's never held office and is backed mostly by left-wing parties. He won the race for governor in Niigata, north of Tokyo, Japan. You know why this is good news? I'll tell you why this is good news. Because uh, the left <coughs> tends to buy into this farce of global warming. Thankfully, even the left is realizing that the answer to this is definitely not to be relying on nuclear energy. Thankfully, they're understanding this. <clears throat> the vote has dominated concerns about the future of Kashi Razika Kawala's power station. Good. Maybe the people there actually have some kind of a life and some, some chance at some help. Uh, health. How about that? Maybe, they ha maybe they're going to see some kind of a future. Shares in Tokyo, uh, TEPCO fell 8%. Good! People's health are falling every day because of what these scum have done. As I have promised all of you, under current circumstances where we can't protect your lives and your way of life, I declare clearly that I can't approve a restart. The 49-year-old hero told reporters at his campaign headquarters. Uh, cheers of Banzai, Banzai erupted as the media began projecting him as the winner. Good. Good, good news there. You know what? That's the kind of thing we need to see more of. Because if we don't, we're going to see more things happening all over the world like we we're seeing here at uh, Fukushima. Um, again, for those of you that uh, tuned in for the live stream, it's, it's on the left. It does look like they have tapered the live stream down. That is not bad news. It looks like maybe some of this could be backing up a little bit. We're going to go into other news here in a minute, but I'm letting you know up front that I will keep you posted on this. The uh, Share the video and let other people know, even if something horrible doesn't happen here, hear me out. What are we looking at in the future? We've seen a massive earthquake in 11. They tried to restart them as early as a year later. And now we are seeing problems that consist of a uh, 7.4, which is nothing to be sniffed at, 7.3, and it's only six miles deep. That, that's, that, that can create a huge amount of water, massive amount of water. When are we going to learn to listen to the people that have been saying all along that we simply cannot go on this way, friends? So I'm going to go on to the other news that I had. I am going to leave <coughs> the live stream up as it is now in case they go back to Fukushima coverage here on um, Fox 10 Phoenix. Shout out to them as I stream them here. Dollar at the highest <coughs> since 2003. Oil falls and choppy trade. How many people were saying, when Donald Trump gets elected, we're going to see the death of the dollar in the country and everybody's going to blow up like power plants? No. The U.S. dollar index touched a near 14-year high on Wednesday while oil prices fell in a volatile session as traders were caught between a build in U.S. stockpiles and a chance of agreement for more output. So a lot of that is beyond beyond anything the president would have control of. But I do find it interesting that all the doom and gloomers were saying that uh, Trump was going to destroy business. As a matter of fact, businesses are thrilled that Donald Trump is in because they're going to be able to hire more people. There's going to be less unnecessary regulation. That doesn't mean uh, no regulation. What we have now is over-regulation. And uh, on Wall Street, declines in bank stocks. 
more than offset gains in technology sector. The S&P 500 ended Tuesday at a 10-week high. I'm not, if I read much more economic news, I'll lose every viewer I have. But suffice to say that the dollar is not crashing under Mr. Trump. Nothing of the kind is happening, and it's not likely to, because <clears throat> I think better economic times are going to be ahead of us, um, for sure. Let's take a look at this real quick, if I can get the screen to come up. It would be nice if I knew how to use my own computer. There we go. Um, this is from LifeZet.com. Trump eyes modern day patent to lead the Pentagon. Now, this man is a little bit over the top in terms of you're not allowed to touch troops in a disrespectful way. So I'm not, I draw the line there. I'm not in favor of that. But this man has the right idea. He comes in peace. However, if you threaten his soldiers, himself, or his country, he is going to obliterate you. And this is the kind of man I think we should... I'm glad that Trump is looking at people like this. Um, again, we're talking about somebody who's facing our enemies. Would I want this man to be the local constable? Do I think he'd make a great police sheriff? Probably not. We're talking about our enemies here. We're talking about people. Go look at your wife. Look at your brother, your sister. We're talking about somebody who has sworn to rape, pillage, behead, burn alive in cages, throw from buildings, and otherwise hurt them. So with that in mind, let's look at who Mattis is. <clears throat> he's a retired Marine General. And he's emerged as a strong candidate for Secretary of Defense, according to reports in New York City. Uh, he's going to have to get special permission to run from Congress, because you have to be out according to federal law mandates without, unless, unless they get a waiver from Congress. They need to be out at least for um, seven years, and he's only been out for three but uh, Trump is trying to get him in. Uh, the outspoken general was born in Washington and <clears throat> has a plethora it says, of experiences in the Marines and served in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. His military resume is so very impressive he was floated as a possible presidential candidate in 2016. He declined to run, but his experience has Trump seriously considering him for the Pentagon. Good. Okay, very, very good. Um, they call him the Mad Dog. <clears throat> His other nickname is the Warrior Monk. Now notice Monk. <clears throat> Fight if you have to. Man of peace if you don't. Trump supporters get an updated version of General Patton, which is good. This is It's Trump keeping his promises here. <clears throat> Here's some of his quotes. You go into Afghanistan, you got guys who slap around women for five years because they don't wear a veil. <clears throat> you know guys like that ain't got no manhood left anyway, so it's a hell of a lot easier to shoot them. Now, you might think that that's cold and callous and hurtful and harm, but you know what? They're not just smacking around women in burkas who are dumb enough to go ahead and choose that lifestyle. They're doing it to people that have no choice but to be roped into it. <clears throat> Donald Trump is supposed to be so against women's rights, huh? Well, there's a man that's uh, going to be possibly the Secretary of Defense who sounds to me like he is in favor of women's rights. So maybe you were wrong about Trump again. He said, I come in peace. I didn't bring artillery. Let me repeat, I come in peace. I didn't bring artillery. But I'm pleading with you, with tears in my eyes, if you F with me, I'll kill you all. He said this to Iraqi officers. Why did he say that? Because Iraqi officers were getting training from America and then turning on the country. And this man said, you're not going to do that if I train you. That's what he said. Uh, planning. Be polite. Be professional. But have a plan to kill everybody that you meet. Why would he say that? Because in 2003, people were coming up asking for help and setting up bombs in their hand. That's why. Uh, the most important six inches on the battlefield is between your ears. Uh, you are part of the world's most feared and trusted force. Engage your brain before you engage your weapon. Again, listen to that. He said, go out and slaughter all the Arabs, right? We hate brown people, we hate women, just kill them all. Is that what he said? No. Engage your brain 
before you engage your weapon. That was to Marines. Gun happy Marines. No, he's got it. He's, he knows what he's doing here. You cannot allow any of your people to avoid the brutal facts. If they start living in a dream world, it's going to be bad. Like the left is. No war is over until the enemy says it's over. We may think it's over. We may declare it's over. But in fact, It literally played itself. The You Are an Idiot song started all by itself. Uh, that's kind of spooky. Killing. The first time you blow someone away is not a significant event. That said, there are some effing effers in the world who just need to be shot. What he means is those attempting to kill you, you must defend yourself. Just look at some of this. Find the enemy that wants to end the experiment of the American democracy, and I'll kill every one of them until they're so sick of killing us that they leave us and our freedoms intact. Again, if you are trying to end America, not that we're going to go to other countries and re-nation build, not that we're going to send our kids, our boys and girls on the ground in order to, to push this agenda forward. No. You leave America alone and we'll leave you alone. But if you try to end what he's calling the American experiment, then we will end you. He says, I'm going to plead with you, do not cross me, because if you do, the survivors will write about what we do here for 10,000 years. Good. Put the fear of God into them. He says, uh, I don't lose any sleep at night over the potential for failure. I cannot even spell the word. You know what? Good good and God bless him and God bless Donald Trump for bringing somebody into this who is going to go ahead and worry about America first as promised but is not a warmonger and does not come seeking a fight that kind of person the school bully we don't want in, in, in anywhere near weaponry here uh, for those of you just tuning in it was live Fukushima stuff the Fukushima news has died down a bit we're going to go to the Dumdy of the Day, which I don't have any theme music for because my computer was possessed by some malevolent monster that turned it on ahead of time. This is from the Independence uh, Sentinel, the idiocy of Donald Sutherland. What an utter freaking dolt. He says white males are mendacious, misogynists, and racists. Because we all know that it's misogynistic to want to stick up for women in the Middle East. We all know that it's racist to want to protect the innocent Iraqis from the uh, bloodthirsty Iraqis, uh, from, from ISIS. That's just terrible. Donald Sutherland is as crazy as he seemed in The Hunger Games. Now listen to this exchange to know what he's talking about. And he's not acting or joking. He's serious. He blathered on insanely with a panel on ice about how Helen Moran told him that he was, you are the most privileged person on earth. Why? Because he's a white male. He was ashamed and has gotten more ashamed that it is seen as part of the group that is mendacious, misogynistic, racist bigots. He can't give his family a hopeful view because their women's rights are gone, the environment is gone, and minimum wage is gone. Minimum wage has worked to hold poor people down and make them even more poor for decades. The environment is going to flourish under Donald Trump because he is going to put in uh, clean coal. Why haven't we had it now? Because it's too expensive to do. Donald Trump is going to make sure that that changes. And women's rights are perfectly intact. Uh, some of the people that are leading his transition team are actually women. But I wouldn't expect him to know that, because he is, in fact, the winner of the Dundee of the Day Award. And that, friends, is the correct views. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And remember, this is listener-supported. I, I make nothing off this show if you guys don't help me. The correct views at Hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. The correct views at Hotmail.com. Anybody who wants either one of these... They are autographed. You're probably going to want the top one since Hillary already isn't elected. $5 for one, $7 for both. If you want the Hillary one, I'll just give it to you for a dollar. Uh, do me a favor, friends.
spread the show around, let people know that I'm out here, and remember that nuclear technology is never the answer. Good night, friends, and God bless all of you.